So as you'll have noticed doing a few tutorial problems on the method of joints, the method is very time consuming and also can cause problems if you get an error very early on in the analyses, that error will propagate through to every subsequent joint that you look at. So to help reduce errors and reduce the time in solving problems, it becomes really useful if we can identify members in trusses that are definitely going to have zero forces within them before we even get started. So to do that, there are a couple of quick hints and tips that we can do to do that. So we're going back to one of the tutorial problems for the method of joints, which will have calculated the zero force members the arduous way by looking at each joint. And now we're going to go back and say, is there a way if I looked at this truss before doing any method joints, but I could look at the truss and say, yep, that's definitely a zero force member without looking at it. So, and it turns out there is, and there are two rules that we can do to help us ascertain whether we have any zero force members. Okay, so rule number one is, if only two co non-collinear members form a truss joint, and no external load or reaction, is applied at the joint, then the two members must be zero force members. So we know from when you did this tutorial problem, but we have two members, AG and FG, they're not collinear with one another, there are no external forces at G, there are no reaction forces at G, and therefore, we can identify before using method of joints that they must have been zero force members before we began with. So that is rule number one. I've written it out there, typed up so you can actually read it. And we have another rule that we can look at as well. So again, we've got one more zero force member on this truss. And so looking at the truss, the second rule is if three members form a truss joint and two members are collinear, the third member is a zero force member, provided that no external force or reaction is applied at the joint. So this says three members form a truss joint and two members are collinear. So here at D, four members form a truss joint, no good. Two members, at, so at E, two members form a just joint, no good. And at A, three members form a joint. However, we do have the reaction force in the X direction at A, so the rule doesn't apply. But we move on to B, we have one, two, three members. And the force is in AB, so here, and the force in BC are collinear. They're along the same, they're acting along the same axes. And the third member, AD, BD, so F, B, D here, is acting, in this case it's 90 degrees, but it doesn't matter whether it's 1 degree, 90 degree, or 75 degrees. So it could be at an angle like so. Doesn't matter. But the main thing is when you do some of the forces in the y direction, when you use the rigorous procedure, you know full well that you have no other forces in the y direction. Therefore, the member BD must be a zero force trust member. So two quick things that can help you out with speeding up these method of joint problems. So look, especially towards the edges of trusses where you have two members, no external forces. So here at G we're looking, no external forces must be a zero force member. We're gonna look again that second rule that we identified. So if we look at joint C, we have two collinear members and we have a third member, EC or CE, that is at an angle to these collinear members, 90 degrees in this case, but because if you do some of the forces in the y direction, there's no opposing forces at C, that must be zero. So straight away, you 
on this problem you would have identified three members where you don't need to do the calculations for. One other thing that can come in really handy when solving these problems, a lot of trusses tend to be symmetric in nature, so maybe we've got a truss like this, lots of members in there. And if and only if, so the geometry is symmetric. If the loading is also symmetric, then we can use that symmetry to know that straight away, so if we call these loads, let's call the sum of these loads is L, a load, then we know straight away that the reactions are half L and one half L pointing upwards. So use symmetry conditions as well wherever possible. However, be really careful that even if the truss is symmetric, ooh, even if the truss is symmetric, so let's make a nice symmetric truss. However, the loading is unsymmetric, so I'm just applying a load on one side. Or, as you might find in some exam problems, loading symmetric or truss symmetric, but maybe you've got a vertical, or sorry, a horizontal force, then you're going to have more reaction here than you would here, and this one is probably going to be pulling downwards. If you take moments about this point here, this is going to have to pull down because that is pulling that way. So this has to pull this way around. So be careful that the loading as well has to be symmetric.